There we go. I think we've got what we need to do the news because it is news time here on the live stream. Looking forward to bring that to everyone. Uh, let me see here. I just got to pull up my thing. There we go. Let us do the news. So October, welcome back to the latest anime news for the week ending October 3rd, 2020. October is the perfect time for zombie horror news, and that's exactly what Capcom has given us this week. It was confirmed during last weekend's Tokyo Game Show Online that a CG Resident Evil series is in the works. The Resident Evil Infinite Darkness miniseries is slated to debut on Netflix sometime in 2021. And we'll center on the protagonists of Resident Evil, Evil 2, uh, Leon Kennedy and Claire Renfield, of course. Sorry, Claire Redfield. Uh, anime studio TMS Entertainment will be handling production of the series with Quebecu, I think I'm pronouncing that right, founded by Resident Evil Vendetta co-producer Kei Miyamoto, handling and producing the full 3D CG animation. Uh, Resident Evil producer Hiroyuki Kobayashi will also be involved in production and story supervision on the series. That's good. Um, the survival, the, the Resident Evil series, uh, known, in bio, known as Biohazard in Japan, has spawned 10 main entries and a number of spin-off games, plus comics, live-action films, and three previous CG animated films, all of, let's just say, varying quality um, and uh, of, of stuff. So uh, I know reaction to this has definitely been mixed, um, but it's always kind of fun and, and, and interesting to see uh, properties like this adapted to uh, to anime. It's kind of interesting because, as far as I know, like there's not a lot of you know uh, horror anime in the classic sort of horror sense. Um, so hopefully this will bring some some horror vibes to uh, to anime and to Netflix. Uh, what's the over well, under on it being any good? Define horror. Because I thought Parasite was pretty like ah, agreed. Ajin Ajin was like ah, yeah. So agreed. You know, I mean, that's two. <laughs> Higarashi. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like there are horror agreed. things out there. Yeah. Uh, Brunhild in the Darkness was one that I enjoyed. Mm. That was very horror-y. Okay. Um, another. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghost Hound. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're yeah. they're. So, at Resident Evil, I've only seen bits and pieces of things about Resident Evil, and that's definitely gorier. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know what I mean? It's like, mm. Well, this might be a more almost grow lined um, mm. kind of anime, I think. It's, so, it's not just horror, but it's going to be body horror, a very yeah, specific true. kind of thing. Right. Um, yeah, I, I haven't, I'm not a big. Um, I'm not invested in the in the in the franchise mm -hmm. as an evil franchise i've seen a couple things and you know i'm just not big into it but it's i've seen different. things man i've, I've seen, seen things, things. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but it is definitely you know action gore i mean you know if you're into that kind of thing you know that's that's you know like if you played doom as a kid mm -hmm. you know you know things like that then this is definitely going to be an interesting anime for you um it if you're like me where it's just kind of like i'll wait to see how other people kind of react yeah. to it if before i yeah take time on it mm -hmm. and it's always well, i'm gonna guess the cg format is gonna be like with the didn't they do a bunch of final fantasy movies i saw one of them at one. one point yeah it is one um but it's like I'm assuming it's going to be like that, where it's going to be like this really kind yeah. of very cool, very well done mm. CG. You would hope so with that that'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, I mean, we got um, uh, Blam Netflix CG, and it was more sort of anime CG. So who knows? Yeah, but, I mean, that production art definitely looks more like you know um, realistic, so to speak. Yeah. So we will we will see. That'll be interesting. Um, um, oh, that's interesting. Uh, good point, End Man. That. Uh, um, um, other CG movies have actually tied into the canon, so I wonder if that's going to actually will actually have some. Oh some yeah. Storyline weaving. Who knows? <clears throat> okay. Cool. Um, moving along. Uh, classic anime studio Shin A has partnered up with voice talent agent Eighty One Produce 
to create the new television anime series I Dolls. And between that name and the promotional art for the show, I think we can safely assume we're looking at a new idol anime. The voice cast for the series were selected through Shin A and anyone produces YouTube program What Say You? Ha ha ha! Uh, which launched in May of 2019 and divided 84 participating voice actors into 10 teams in a fight to the death. No. Um, uh, Ray, the company behind the VTuber live performance project, Project Singularity, will also work on production for the series. The production will use motion capture technology to record the movements of the voice cast while making voice recordings with the goal of incorporating the realistic acting and natural reactions of the cast directly into the animation which I think is very, very interesting. Creepy. <laughs> Creepy. Creepy. Um, we'll see. It's it... going to be Flowers of Evil all over again, <laughs> singing and dancing. <laughs> oh, boy. I can't think of a better match than Flowers of Evil with singing and dancing, personally. Yeah, it's just, just... ideal. Um, we'll see. I, I, I appreciate that they, they say incorporating – I didn't like use that word, but you know, the implication is that they're not going to like rely on it too heavily. It'll be more, you know, can we kind of match it up? And there was a a Bishonen CGI series like a year or two ago, uh, which did this of, of all CGI, where they basically mocapped the actors in a green screen green screen studio, and then just mapped that onto the CGI of the characters, hmm. um, and it worked pretty well because it was, it was all just like very anime character designs right so you weren't getting all the right. weird wrinkles and all that stuff um well they they i swear they did something similar to that with love live school sunshine oh okay um because you have when they're talking and they're doing stuff and they're you know at school and whatever mm -hmm. else is happening it's a it's a very anime normal oh, style yeah, drawn 2D, looking yeah. style mm -hmm. and then when they do their concerts mm -hmm. It's a lot of like really movement. I think would probably snap most people's hands off. So <laughs> it's done the the mm -hmm. the singing and dancing parts of of Love Life School Sunshine. It, they're done so well that mm. it makes me wonder if it's motion capture because the fluidity of their dancing mm -hmm. is. I, I I'm not versed enough in the technology to know how much effort that would take to make. Mm -hmm. But it's it's yeah. impressive and makes I go back every once in a while and watch some of the song sequences from that just to mm. watch it and be like, damn, mm. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So this will be interesting. I mean, yeah. motion capture again, depending how you're how you're applying what you're capturing, <laughs> you can either skeeve me out or make me really dive in. Yeah, okay. <laughs> totally. Um, you also help help that. Um, um, yeah, like a lot of CG anime does have the disadvantage of being a little plasticky, of being very you know restrained visually because right. every movement costs money. Right. So hopefully <laughs> with with this you can kind of bridge that gap. Um, we we will we'll we'll have to see. Uh, let's see here. Um, next up, another light novel anime adaptation. So get ready for a long and complicated title. Uh, a website opened this morning to announce an upcoming anime adaptation for Shuichi Nimaru's light novel series, a romantic comedy where the childhood friend absolutely will not lose. Not too bad. Uh, called Osomake for short, the teen rom-com focuses on, wait for it, average high school boy who has never had a girlfriend, Suiharu Maru. Uh, Maru finds an amazing... Uh, Maru finds himself in the middle of the heroin battle between his beautiful first crush, Shirokusa Kachi, and his childhood friend, Kuroha Shida. The... <laughs> well, I, you know, the series will be animated at Dogakobo, known for other cute series like Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, Himoto Umaru-chan, and Yuru Yuri. Uh, Nimaru launched a light novel series with illustrations by Ue Shigure back in June of 20, 2019, and the fifth volume is set to debut um, on October 10th. The uh, series also inspired a manga. So, uh, this down anyone's alley here? Sounds fun. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'll probably buy into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I will. Hook, line, yeah. and sinker. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the idea that we're going to watch some poor teenage guy be involved in a heroin battle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be. <laughs> hey, 
It's going to be a heck of a hook it's on that. What series. it says, it's what it says. I just read the, I just read the, the, the words. That's all I can say. Uh, our, our last anime announcement this week uh, brings another comedy series with some social commentary thrown in. Ooh. Uh, manga creator Odeko Fuji announced via Twitter this week that the Yojo Shacho manga, or Little Girl President, is inspiring an anime. The two-volume gag comedy series centers around an aggressively average five-year-old girl, as they say, Najimu Mujina, who, despite not being a genius or an adult, is president of the Mujina Company. Uh, as described by ANN, all the familiar trappings of adulthood, like matchmaking parties, contracts, and socializing while golfing, are new experiences to her. Uh, and the story follows Najimu and her colorful cast of employees as she navigates modern business life. Now, this is not the first time we've seen business and anime you know, intersecting uh, in the plot of, of anime. Um, this is certainly an, a... I have certainly not seen this particular take on it before. Uh, five-year-old I just, girl. I, I just feel like this is an Adam Sandler movie. Yes. Yes. Oh. Well, didn't mm. they do Boss Baby like a few years ago or something? Yeah, it was a CGI. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like some similar kind of concept where True. it's like, oh, isn't this funny? You take like a wildly too young person. They won't understand anything or object permanence. <laughs> hey, it's great. It's funny for everybody. <laughs> I just wonder, is she going to have a shocking, you know, stack of red hair on her head? Hmm? Baby <laughs> president. Mm, ah. Baby president. Yeah. Shocking red hair. Sorry, not not following. Sorry, don't get it. Sorry. And go to who's currently president that has shocking red hair. Sorry, not getting it. He acts like a child. Sorry, not getting it. Trump. Trump. Oh, okay. I don't think of it that is okay. I didn't think of it as red hair. Okay. I didn't see it. <laughs> what would you say it is? Uh, it's kind of strawberry blondish. It's yeah, not red red. Yeah. It's not like Lucille Ball. Yeah, right? I was thinking more like you know. <laughs> vibrant red so yeah sorry oh, just yeah yeah no it's not like an, it's not anime i was thinking red. is that but... does putin have red hair like what's going on um <laughs> well so, solari's got it he's orange man so there we go there you oh, go that worked there we go. Yeah. um let's see here uh moving right along um recently we've been, we've been seeing more and more anime companies and franchises turn to crowdfunding to gather funds for their projects and a new company in chiba is hoping to join in new company Anime Fund, pretty clear title, officially revealed their company details and website this week. Uh, they aim to provide a new way for fans to directly support anime productions and also to become a promotional platform for those productions. Yeah. Uh, along with crowdfunding itself, the site will also support promotional materials, videos, and messaging alerts for active crowdfunding projects. Uh, now, like many previous crowdfund projects, Anime Fund will offer various rewards to supporters, yeah. like keyframes, merchandise, and the opportunity to have your names in the end credits. Uh, they plan to officially launch November 3rd, so about a month from now. The latest anime to make use of crowdfunding is Dropkick on My Devil, which also announced this week that a crowdfunding campaign had been launched to fund a third season. The staff hopes through the campaign they can raise enough funds to both create a full third season and continue to make content for fans in the in-between time. Uh, rewards for that uh, range from exclusive song downloads and messages from the main voice actress to cameos in the series itself and the opportunity to title one of the episodes How Can That Possibly Go Wrong? Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Wasn't yeah. there something like the National Oceanographic uh, NOAA people, they let kids name something and it was like a side scanning uh sonar buoy and it ended up being called Bodie McBoatface. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Bodie McBoatface. Yeah. It's like, oh here we go. This is gonna be great. Mm -hmm. This is why you have oversight, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um yeah. now they're making anime fund is making stuff itself or are they at, are they going they're to just be a platform. clearing house they're just a platform okay they're, they're just they're, okay you know, i should say yeah i think yeah and they'll parse out the money to whoever's going to show up and ask for money and it sounds like what what i, I you know this seems like it's just kickstarter um because you know yeah. all this stuff but it sounds like it's more like we will like host the videos for you we will provide a lot of the like ui 
so that if you want to interact with fans, it's not just you know three thousand blog posts on your Kickstarter page. Um, right. So it looks like there'll be a little more robustness around that sort of interaction with fans, which I think does make sense. Um, well, also, it's just not really just did. an open-ended Kickstarter. You have to look down through the menu yeah, to find the right. anime section. It will be oh, yeah. just anime. Mm -hmm. so yep. Easier to find, I guess. Definitely. I just feel like it's another way to take my money. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Purposely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here, take it all. I, mean, I, love, I love the idea of consolidating something yeah. that will just funnel things to anime mm -hmm. i'll be curious to hear as it goes forward how they're going to determine you know if you have a bunch of small studios show up how do they know which one of like 10 projects presented to them by 10 small studios mm -hmm. To fund, or do they just well flat out say we've got a hundred dollars and here's ten of you? So well, here you go, here's a little bit of money each. It's you crowdfunding know? though. It, it, you know, they're not funding it. It's crowdfunding. They're, so they're not clearing. They're not. You're not paying into them, and then they spread it out to people. Well, you you, you are, but you know, it, they're 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 sending it to whoever you want it to go to. Okay. So, you know, so, so you, would so probably you have a choice of where your money goes to. Right. So, so, okay. yeah, I, yeah, I, I kind of yeah. like the idea of a, of a broad umbrella to be like, oh, gotcha. give so money, yeah. and then they can go out and it's find projects. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, no, I, I think this is going to be more like Kickstarter, where it's, you know, they okay. come on, they do a project, and then that gets the money, hopefully. So the little studio show up and say, we want to do this, and they say, fine, we'll open up this link for you on Anime Fund, and then people can give there. Right. And we'll just monitor what's going on to make sure you don't, like you said, well, get swamped with people like on your Kickstarter page. Well, I don't think it's, it's monitoring. It's, it's more running all those services. So it's providing the ability right. to send blog posts and send updates and send videos and so forth and so on. So hmm. providing a lot of functionality behind that. That'd be interesting. So, yeah. So they, so they can continue on the art of anime. Right. Exactly. Um, it sounds like it's basically the OVA market, right? It's basically the digital version of the of OVAs. Where it's yeah. like we're going to go direct to fans and present things to them and say, "Will you support this thing?" Um, which you know doesn't really um, doesn't really have the backing of uh, you know enough backing to get a TV series or a you know season five or what have you. Um, but if the fans love it enough, I, I think it's good. I, I like it. I think it's a good idea. I mean, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's something I again I used to do in other places where mm -hmm. <clears throat> not dealing with with kick or crowdfunding like this but you know foundation um grants and things like that and yeah you know, there are foundations that are open-ended like that like uh baltimore community foundation where they you know it's a it's this giant fund and you go i'm putting money into the giant fund for this particular nonprofit mm. in baltimore and so it sounds kind of like that a little, but a more accessible and it sounds like these people if I'm reading you right, Brent, uh, that they're taking the ownership of actually so that the animators actually really can do the animation and they're just mm -hmm. providing that, 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 that logistical support in terms of the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah. So, the yeah. Money, you know, once it ends, the like money it. shows up in their account and you're done. Again, now, let me pull out my wallet. <laughs> yeah. Now, is this, I wonder if they're looking to, get people broadly who are funding anime mm -hmm. oh totally away from kickstarter you know what i mean mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. trying to segue kickstarter thank you it's been great but now we're going to handle this end of anime stuff you go yeah. kickstart other you know watches and tvs and <laughs> other things we'll, we'll handle this so, you guys are good yeah so so just to just to ask about this i don't know if you know this brent um are they charging a fee to I mean, they haven't yeah, even launched just, yet, so we don't know because, yet. Okay, okay, because that'd be kind of cool if they weren't charging a fee. I mean, typically Kickstarter doesn't. I mean, they they they, they charge yeah. a fee, but it comes off of you know you, it's however many percent right. of every yeah, yeah. every pledge. Right. Um, well, like Wikipedia, I think I donated five bucks to them, and like, would you like to donate an additional fifty three cents? to cover the processing fees with whoever mm -hmm. manages the money that comes into Kickstarter or right. into, into Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize there was. I didn't oh, realize yeah. that that happened. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. fine enough. Yeah, like $5.53. Mm -hmm. Credit card processing fees, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah. yeah, so it'll be interesting. I mean, and also this is not the first service like this. There have been several other attempts to set up like anime crowdfunding um, platforms. None have really stuck. So here's hoping. Hopefully they've got a better better lock on this. So yeah. we'll see. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, now, last up in our main discussion uh, section of uh, the, the week, Netflix has always kept their view viewership data private, making it difficult to concretely measure the popularity of the original series. However, content media uh, content marketing agency Neo Mam Studios, I don't know why they call themselves that, it probably means something, made use of worldwide search data to get a better idea of which Netflix original anime are most in demand. Using the search engine Flexible and Google's Keyword Planner, excuse me, Neo Mam compiled data on which Netflix anime series were most searched for over the last year. It found that the most searched anime across the world is by far The Seven Deadly Sins, ranking number one in 127 countries. That's the yellow on the infographics over here. Um, the series is currently gearing up for its next season, which will premiere in January. Behind that is Beastars in blue, uh, which topped the searches in 35 countries, including Japan. So that's interesting. Um, after Beastars comes Castlevania in purple, uh, and then Blam, or Blame in red, which among others was the most searched Netflix anime in Antarctica. So there you have it. Uh, apparently it's a favorite of the few otaku scientists out there on the ice. Also represented are Violet Evergarden, Kengon Ashura, and a few other series. Without the actual viewership data, we'll never know how much these searches correlate with the anime that are actually being watched most. Perhaps the question is, what makes a series popular to search for? And do these factors also make a series popular to watch? It's that classic question of people are interested in a thing, but then does that interest actually translate to, you know, fandom? Who knows? Right. Um, Shonen is a great example of that, where things get popular, folks search for it, they may watch some of it. They don't necessarily, you know, go back and watch yeah. all of Boruto. Right. Um, right. So it shows up as a Google search term that's that's rising rate as mm -hmm. you know people are looking at it. And they get one episode, <laughs> five minutes in, and go, Nah, I'm not. I'm not for that. But Google's like, Hey, look at all the searches on this. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I find it very interesting. The Seven yeah, Deadly Sins is getting another yeah. season because, boy, goodness, I'm having a hard time I, finishing this last season. <laughs> I, I I just can't. I just have such a hard time with that. Like when it doesn't surprise me that it's number one on the search mm. uh, because that's actually how I came across it. But ah, you know, go. it's kind of like, you know, you watch literally got into one episode. And I'm just like, mm, okay. mm -hmm. click. Yep. <laughs> Let's watch Daredevil. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad to see Beast Stars though. Yes. Uh, and there's another season of Beast Stars coming out apparently. Nice. I don't remember what it said about when. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, Haru and Lagoshi. Oh boy, yeah. Oh, please. I have seen one episode of that, and it is. It is damn impressive. It is just like, oh yes, this is everything. It's an engaging story. Uh, they they did a really good job with that. That's great. Um, what's funny about that, just to, to uh, segue for a second, um, that is my Studio Orange. Uh, their previous anime was Land of the Lustrous. Um, Which is amazing in yeah. itself. Um, they're an all-CG anime company, and they're very dedicated to this idea that we're going to take the lessons of 2D animation and apply that to 3D. Not to try to make 3D look like 2D, but to say you know motion and so forth. And you can tell Land of the Lustrous is all about, you know, crystal girls. It's all about very shiny, you know, very uh, plasticky, if you will, characters. So it's a very natural fit for CGI. And then they go straight to furries. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay, how do we solve this problem? Um, but they did such man. a good job. Yeah, and they do. And it's like... <laughs> Good on you for saying this is the next technical you know hurdle for us to jump over. Let's do that. So what do we do after B stars? That that's what I am most interested in. Man. Um, oh, wait a minute, let them get done B stars season yeah, two. Exactly. And yeah. Then after that. Mm, or, you know, yeah. that wraps the story, <laughs> then per that's fine. Then they can move on, but please don't go away before that. Mm -hmm. Uh in other news, longtime voice actor Kosei Tomita sadly passed away this week at age eighty four. 
He began his more than 50-year career in anime with a role in the original 1963 Astro Boy series, and also reprised his role of Higeo Yaji in several other Osamu Tezuka anime. He also voiced Doraemon himself in the original 1973 Doraemon series and performed roles in countless other anime. Yeah. Also provided the Japanese dub voices for many Western movies and TV shows and even did voice work for Tokyo Disneyland. The Harvey Awards, which honor outstanding work in comics and other sequential art, announced this week they'll induct Osamu Tezuka, father of manga, into their Hall of Fame. The awards will take place digitally this year, uh, of course, with a live stream ceremony sometime during New York Comic Con's digital event on October 8th through 11th, so just a few days from now. Um, unlike the Eisner Awards and others in North American comic book industry, the Harvey Awards are nominated and selected by the comic book professionals themselves. So, key difference there. This week brings another way to read manga online, this time through the unlikely venue of Facebook. WFS and Hobuncha have launched the Manga Time Kirara Comics app in more than 240 countries and regions through Facebook Instant Games. The app provides access to four-panel manga from Hobuncha's Manga Time Kirara magazine in both Japanese and English, not 240 or 238 other languages. Uh, launch titles in the service include k is the Order of Rabbit, and The Demon Girl Next Door, among others. More titles will be released in the future, including Blendess and New Game. Uh, Honbuncha launched digital versions of its magazines, uh, Manga Time Kirara, Manga Time Kirara Carrot, and Manga Time Kirara Max back in 2019. So they're not new to this. Finally, Sunrise announced this week that the life-size moving Gundam will officially hold its grand opening to the public on December 19th. Get your tickets. The Gundam Factory Yokohama includes the mech itself, a lab area where visitors can learn about the technology behind the giant model, a cafe, and an observation deck that puts fans at eye level with the Gundam. The attraction will remain open through March 31st. So you only have three and a half months. Uh, the giant model performs a demonstration of its abilities every half hour from 10.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m., with the staff planning to run special seasonal shows from time to time. Exactly. <laughs> this thing's supposed to operate 24-7 every day exactly. of the year. Yes, for the rest of time. Um, yes. I'm very uh. curious. Now, I'm sure they do not mean that on March 31st they say, okay, start unbolting it. Right. Like <laughs> Tear it down, boys. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, like that Man. exhibition, right? They'll they'll shift it around. Um, or they'll just they'll just walk to the next exhibition spot. <laughs> <laughs> It'll wave and just walk away. <laughs> like, hey, I thought it was connected. That's one thing. <laughs> God, being eye level on that thing. Oh, uh, man, man. So somehow, for only three so somehow three months get... though, three and a half months. That's yeah. it. We're gonna to have to become illegal aliens in Japan. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Yeah, good luck getting in. Hoping. We'd have to find a boat to get us close <laughs> and then swim ashore. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping Japan will ease its travel restrictions in 2021. Um, granted, I'm sure they won't have a problem with tickets. Like, I'm, I'm sure it'll still be yeah. well popular. Um, you know, they'll, they'll be fine. But dang, dang. I think there are a lot of people. Well, watch. It'll run three and a half months at its current form, and then, like, right at the end, there'll be, like, this big unveiling, and there'll be, like, a Zaku next yeah. to <laughs> Like, oh, well, my. That was even better. <laughs> Here, here's the thing. Um, you know, you say that. Uh, Gundam Build Fighters um, famously uh, ends, the final episode is at Odaiba. Actually, no, I think it's at, yeah, I think it's at Odaiba. Um and they show the Gundam statue next to a Zaku statue. In that. And everyone was like, ooh, ooh, do that, please. Like, yes, thank you. Um, so, you know, maybe, who knows? Uh, and, of course, that was the original plan, was to have two of them. All right. Um, oh, yeah, it, it, it was Char's thing. custom Zaku, too. Um, there you mm, I would, I would, I would pay good money for that. I would pay a lot of I'm, money. For I'm, that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend, I'm gonna practice my yes, <laughs> Gundam, Gundam piloting for the feeling. Yes, sir. Yep. 
Ikimasu. So, yes, that is all the news fit to print this week. Uh, we'll be back next week with more news. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. We'll see where that goes. Um, but now... Um, so yeah, ha- um, I know many manga fans have gone wild for Beastars since Viz started releasing them. That's cool. Good to hear that the Beastars manga is, uh, is successful. Um... Uh, yeah, I'm curious how the how the manga, what the manga is like. I've seen like a few images of it, and it, you know, they definitely adapted it fairly strongly for the uh, for the anime. Doesn't look quite the same. I know Crunchyroll store was selling it, the manga for mm. for a little while. They had it, they had it on a super sale, and then I've seen it bits and places of other, you know, on sale at other spots. So. Mm. I still have to watch it. Mm. Mm-hmm. You won't be disappointed. It'll, it, you, you'll enjoy I, I'm it. I'm getting that sense. I'm getting that sense. I, I, yeah, I'm sensing yeah, that I will enjoy it. But we're being very subtle about it, I know. But uh, kind of, <laughs> just kind a little of bit. It. Yeah. Um, but now I'm going to talk about something I like. Uh, let oh. me just uh, talk for a moment. Yeah, there's there's anime that I enjoy. Imagine that. Um, so I'm going to talk for a moment about something that uh, I rather enjoy. Hello, welcome to Brent's Anime Recommendation Corner. I'm going to talk for a minute about uh, an anime that I happen to love uh, that is not well known amongst anime fans, um, but I think is a remarkable little work of anime called Horus Prince of the Sun, or The Little Norse Prince. This is an anime film made in the 60s at Toy Animation, featuring uh, someone named Isao Takahara that you may have heard of since... Uh, it is a loose adaptation of a Scandinavian uh, story, kind of a fairy tale, very adventure uh, It is about a, uh, a young man named Horus, or Holds, uh, and the adventure he goes on, basically. And I'm not, not actually going to show you too much uh, uh, image-wise from this film, partly because there's a lot of plot in this that I think is, is worth kind of experiencing on your own. It has that quality of early anime films of having a quite a lot of animation budget in terms of motion and uh, uh and like just frames per second um and you can totally see the toy studio working through um animation and, and trying to make their anime films look impressive so there's an amazing sequence i'll see if i can find here um of hose Fighting a fish. There we go. Um, and there's this fight with this fish that is just kind of mind blowing. The water animation is gorgeous. The way it flows and moves. Um, and there's this, this back and forth fight between holes and the fish. Uh, and it just has drama. It has impact in a way that a lot of fight sequences in anime films up to this up to this point were a little more flashy. They were a little more. Uh, light-hearted, if you will. Even when they were dramatic, there was a, a, it's kind of a weightlessness to them. And the action in Horus just feels very grounded. It feels like this, you know, d- desperate um, uh, peoples living out in this uh, inhospitable wilderness, kind of doing their best to survive, while still having some, uh, you know, some definitely some exciting stuff. Uh, there's this wonderful opening sequence with Hol- uh, Horus. He does this thing with his axe... Uh, which is absolutely absurd. He has an axe on a rope, and so he can he can throw the axe and then just pull it back to him, uh, like it's on a lasso, uh, and just kind of and then like swing it over his head and like take out multiple creatures. It's it's crazy, but really awesome in that way that anime often is. Um, and just kind of this really neat concept that uh, really works uh, surprisingly well. Um, uh, but still, again, it kind of has that, that desperateness to it, that idea that you're, you're in there kind of doing your best against these kind of overwhelming odds. Um, it does have a fantastical aspect to it. I mean, Prince of the Sun, that's kind of a hint. It is, it's a, there's somewhat f- fantastical elements to it. Uh, it has kind of a fairy tale quality, some of the, the story elements to it. Um, but it's definitely a unique film, and it's a film that, um, you know, you'll watch and afterwards you'll think about it. You know, an image will, images will come back to your, to your mind after watching it. Um, it's, it's just a, uh, um, 
it's early anime, but it's it's uh, it's it's one of those anime films clearly dedicated to quality, clearly dedicated to telling a uh, an impactful story uh, with uh, with strong characters and a, a strong through line. Um, something that I think anime often misses in in modern day is this desire to tell a very um, easy to grasp story where it's not and it's not that anime is often hard to understand but often it's kind of abstract in a way or it's more um you know laid back slice of life kind of stories well i love those but um often there's, there's no clear like through line of i'm trying to get here to get here to get here um a good james bond film is very clearly motivated and there's this very clear motivation uh, all the way through this film and um yeah i just wanted this really fascinating sort of view into anime in a very transitional time so that's horace prince of the sun i just i find it really interesting so yeah just want to talk about that real quick wink why why isn't that working do that there we go and then we have we have returned back everything Uh yeah i still have not found horace in in any other Sources. Again, we can fix this. And we will make sure that, it, that there are. Uh, titles. It was actually released on DVD, Blu-ray recently. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, th- there was that. So I'm not sure if it's streaming anywhere though. Mm. Um, because I looked looked for it and I found I found and watched a completely completely <laughs> different series. Oh no! <laughs> it's it's Spirit of the Sun. Okay. It's like Tayo no Morijimuth something or other Spirit of the Sun. And it's like this fight kind of story. And I watched oh, the entire thing. It was actually ah, really good. Cool. I thought it was it was kind of cool. Um, but not this one. It yeah. was not Horus. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, so, yeah, I think, Brent, you've talked before about sometimes the adventure is just sort of like spinning the wheel and be like, okay, that one, and then see what you get. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get yeah. something good. Sometimes you get total trash. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Adventures um, in anime. And, uh, interesting. Seinen manga, Spirit of the Sun, apparently. Yeah, I I didn't think I was going to like a fight show either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. Interesting. 